Um, this is all about first order differential equations and to illustrate what's going on I'm using a question from the 2016 to 17 May exam. Um, and the question is really about this differential e equation here uh, dx by dt plus 3x equals 6t minus 1 and um, if you look at the question, you can find it uh, online, I think. Um, if you look at the question, you'll find there's some information coming later on. First of all, we really have to solve this differential equation, and that's kind of where I want to focus. Um, but eventually, we're also going to look at some initial conditions. So when t equals 0, x equals 2, what's the solution then? And then we're going to look at um, a kind of more complicated version of the same question. Um, but the thing that I really want to focus on is part A and B, which is about finding the uh, general solution to this equation. Um, the place to start with differential equations is by remembering that they are equations. What we're looking for is something that makes this equal sign here true. So we need to find a function x where when we differentiate it, and add it to 3 times itself, the answer turns out to be 6t minus 1. And to get there, we're going to do two things. Um, it's always two similar stages to solve these kinds of differential equations. Um, I'll just write them out. Two things to consider. There is something called a complementary function. And that makes the left hand side equal zero. And there's something called the particular integral. And that makes the left hand side equal the right hand side on this equation. And so I guess an important point to think about right from the start that means if we on the left hand side add up as many copies of the complementary function as we want plus one of the particular integral then we'll have as many copies of zero on the right hand side plus one of what we wanted on the right hand side and that means we've got what we wanted on the right hand side so that's how this is going to work so um, let's just go through it in order and see first of all how to get the complementary function and then how to get the particular integral um, the complementary function um, we've already said is where the left hand side that's the x by dt plus 3x has to equal 0 um, and um, what we need here is something where when we differentiate it and add it to 3 times itself, it kind of all cancels out. So that means the derivative has to look a bit like the function itself. And one thing that you'll remember from earlier calculus is a place where that's true is exponentials. Exponentials, um, when you differentiate them, you've still got an exponential. So we'll be able to add everything up if we stick to exponentials. So the trick here is that we always try solving it by assuming that x is an exponential. And we're always going to use the same form of x. We're going to try x equals a e to the lambda t. And you kind of just have to remember uh, that that's the form you're going to start by trying. Um, then we can say dx by dt, um, the first derivative, which we also need in this equation, is going to be, and you need to remember how to differentiate e to the lambda t with respect to t, that comes out to be lambda a e to the lambda t. When we differentiate this term, the lambda that multiplies the t uh, comes down at the front. And so now we can put all of this into our equation. Let's call that equation 1. And equation 1 is going to become dx by dt. Well, we know that's lambda a e to the lambda t plus 3x, that's 3 times this, equals 0. 
And now what I'm going to do is group some terms. Both of these have an a e to the lambda t term. So I can say this is the same as saying lambda plus 3 multiplied by a e to the lambda t equals 0. Um, if two things multiply together to give 0, one of those things must equal 0. This term here doesn't equal 0, or if it does, that's a slightly trivial case that we're not interested in. So we're interested in the solution where lambda plus 3 equals 0, and therefore lambda equals minus 3. So our complementary function then We said we were going to try a complementary function of the form x equals a e to the lambda t. Um, and when we tried that, we found that the version of it that will give us 0 when we plug it into the differential equation is uh, when lambda equals minus 3. So we say, OK, the complementary function is x equals a e to the minus 3 t. Sorry, that's not the best E I've ever drawn, but um, that's what that says. And I'll just underline that because that's the start of what we wanted. Um, our complementary function is done. And now we had two things to consider. So we found the, the term where when we differentiate it and add it to three times itself, it makes uh, zero. So that makes the left hand side equal zero. Now we need to find the function that makes the left-hand side equal the right-hand side. Um, and so we need to think about the uh, particular integral. So this is kind of stage two now. We're going to leave stage one alone for a bit, come back and think about it later. Um, for particular integrals, um, the, the key understanding is the term you use for x should look something like what you want to get to on the right hand side. Um, when I was at university they gave us this formula sheet here and it says if your right hand side is a constant your trial particular integral should be a constant. If your right hand side is some kind of polynomial term um, I'll just say briefly, there's some potential for confusion here. Um, these terms refer to y as a function of x, perhaps. We're looking at x as a function of t. So this is like if you had t to the power of n in our problem. But don't worry too much about that. The thing to remember is if you've got a polynomial on the right hand side, and remember a polynomial can be like uh, t cubed plus 4t squared plus 3, or it could just be 6t minus 1, which is what we've got. If you've got a polynomial on the right-hand side, you want a polynomial as your trial particular integral. If you've got an exponential on the right-hand side, you want an exponential as your trial particular integral. And if you've got sine or cos on the right-hand side, you want a sum of sines and coses as your trial particular integral. And then there are some slightly more uh, complicated forms and special cases, but uh, we'll leave those. The The four main things that you want to think about are um, if the right hand side, let's just draw out this table, and I'm afraid I'm going to leave it um, in kind of explanations, so a constant right hand side needs a constant trial particular integral, a polynomial right hand side you could say a constant is just a special case of a polynomial but let's not say that uh, uh, a polynomial gets a polynomial an exponential gets an exponential and the last one uh, sine alpha x or cos alpha x gets something like um, a sine alpha x plus b cos alpha x. Um, 
so sines and cosers get sines and cosers. I guess I could have used trigonometric and trigonometric as um, matching terms in that table. Anyway, let's just go back and think again. So we've got dx by dt, this is the same problem we started with, plus 3x equals 6t minus 1. Um, and what we want to do is um, choose a trial particular integral. And we've already said if we've got a polynomial term on the right hand side, which is what this is, um, then we need a polynomial term on as our trial particular integral. So I'm going to say we'll try uh, x equals a... Uh, actually, I've already used capital A in the last one, so let's do capital B, T plus C. And all of these capital letters are unknowns at the moment. Um, OK, well, in that case, um, if we try that, then we know dx by dt equals, differentiate this with respect to t, and we get capital B, differentiate this with respect to t, and we get 0. So, again, our equation 1 becomes dx by dt, which we've got here, plus 3 times x equals 6t minus 1. Now I'm going to take some terms together. This is 3bt, that's that term, plus b plus 3c, that's that term, and that term equals 6t minus 1. And quite often at this stage, you end up comparing coefficients. So this bit here has to... The, the, the thing that multiplies the t has to match the thing that multiplies the t, and the, um, try not to run out of colours, the units term has to match the units term. So that gives us uh, 3 times b times t equals 6t. The two terms with the kind of purple bracket have to match up with each other because they're the t terms. That means 3b equals 6, and therefore b equals 2. Also, uh, b plus 3c equals minus 1, which means that we already know b. 2 plus 3c equals minus 1, and that's going to mean that c equals minus 1. So our particular integral, again we tried something in the hope that it would allow us to find a function which when you plug it in on the left hand side gives us what we want on the right hand side and that's kind of worked. I'm going to say our particular integral equals um, bt plus c, that's 2t minus 1. Um, Okay, let's take a new sheet. Oh, sorry, I realise I may not have shown the bottom of that sheet quite as clearly as I wanted to. Uh, but there's our particular integral. And now what we can say is uh, the general solution equals the complementary function. plus the particular integral. Uh, so the general solution is x, which is a function of t, is a e to the minus 3t, that's the complementary function we calculated, plus uh, 2t minus 1. And in this question in the exam, that um, is quite a long way towards the answer. I just want to go to one side for a moment. What we were really saying with all of this is we wanted to create a function where that function, when we plug it into our original equation, if we take this general solution and use it as x, 
and and find what the left hand side equals then we should get 6t minus 1 out in the end um, so it's kind of informative just to check whether that's actually happened or not so let's look at it I uh, was saying um, x of t is this I can calculate dx by dt that's going to be minus 3 a e to the minus 3 t uh, plus 2 I think uh, differentiate that term and I get that term differentiate this term and I get that and differentiate minus 1 and I get 0 um, so dx by dt plus 3x equals minus 3a e to the minus 3t plus 2 plus 3 times I might have to allow this to sort of spill down a bit uh, plus 2t minus 1 Right, this is all one line, I just didn't want to go off the side of the page. Um, and that equals, I'll do it fairly step by step, minus 3a to the minus 3t plus 2 plus 3a e to the minus 3t plus 3 times 2t is 6t plus 3 times minus 1 is minus 3 which equals, and then uh, this term and this term will cancel out. We've got minus 3 of something and plus 3 of something. Uh, this term and this term together will give us minus 1. And so I end up with 6t minus 1. So dx by dt uh, plus 3x, this term here, equals this term here. And just to be clear, that's what we started out looking for uh, right at the top of the very first page. So, you know, I guess the important thing is that this works. The general solution that we've chosen here, um, when we use it as our form of x in the differential equation, the left-hand side equals the right-hand side, and that's what we were hoping for. Um, so you don't need to do this bit. Um, I'm going to write that it is optional but a helpful check because obviously in a lot of these questions we're doing quite a lot of algebra and it's easy to let a minus sign slip or something like that or forget to multiply through a bracket so sometimes having different ways you can approach the problem can be a good way to catch any potential um, mistakes okay uh, that was in a way we've done parts one and part two um, and now I'm going to look at part three and what we said there is when t equals zero x equals two and I'm just going to write out the information again the general solution is x is a e to the minus three t plus two t minus one um, and the reason that we might want this information in our general solution we still got one unknown uh, this capital A and it would be nice to have no unknowns in the problem so that if we want to plot a graph of how x varies as t varies we can at the moment we can't do that because this A is also unknown um, so often we'll be given one um, initial condition or one condition and then we've got an equation with an unknown and we've got one more piece of information so we can eliminate the unknown so when t equals 0 x equals 2 uh, that means x of 0 equals 2 and that equals a e to the minus 3 0 plus 2 0 minus 1 um, and in turn that means uh, e to the power of 0 is 1 2 times 0 is 0 and that's a minus 1 so therefore a equals 3 um, and so the uh, 
new solution, the solution with this um, specific condition is x equals 3e to the minus 3t plus 2t minus 1. And that's now a function where if you wanted to, you could draw a graph of x as a function of t. Um, and so you've got a, a relationship between the two variables you're interested in. Um, one of the things that I didn't say at the start that's probably worth reiterating, these kinds of things turn up in engineering a huge amount. Um, so obviously you learn the maths first and then you start to see all kinds of applications for it. Um, but these uh, differential equations will describe many physical systems, either ones which are varying in time or varying in space, um, and then being able to solve them tells us something about um, about the physical system uh, and often it's what we need to know about the physical system. So that's why we're here. This isn't just um, esoteric maths that's never used. This is actually um, the kind of bread and butter of many kinds of engineering. Um, there was a final part of the problem and that said when t equals 1 uh, x equals 1 plus 1 over e. Um, and then the question was, what is x at t equals 0? Um, and I don't have the question here, but I'm assuming we're supposed to uh, this is kind of a new set of boundary conditions. So this was the old boundary condition. This is a new one. So we go back and we say, OK, well, we know still x of t equals a e to the minus 3t plus 2t minus 1. Um, x of 1 equals a e to the minus 3 times 1 plus 2 times 1 minus 1 and that equals a e to the minus 3 plus 1. Um, so I've substituted in t equals 1 into our general solution and then I'm trying to find out uh, what that is. Now we also know uh, that has to equal 1 plus 1 over e. Just I think I've got room on this page to finish this off. I'll just try and um, get it in. Uh, we know that that we've just found out a e to the minus 3 plus 1 equals 1 plus 1 over e which um, and I'll just remind you uh, a e to the minus 3 is e cubed on the bottom line so it's 1 over e cubed uh, plus 1 equals and I'm just going to change things around a bit 1 over e plus 1 and I think then you can see we're getting a over e cubed equals 1 over e and if I multiply both sides by e cubed I'll get that a equals e squared. Um, I thought I might finish this on this piece of paper. I'm not going to, and in any case, uh, trying to fit things into the corner of a piece of paper is a bad idea. Um, use as much space as you need to. Um, so where I've got to is we know x of t equals uh, a e to the minus 3t plus 2t minus 1. That's all the same stuff we had before. And now we know um, a equals e squared. So I'm just going to put that straight in. e squared e to the minus 3t plus 2t minus 1. Uh, and the question was, what is x at t equals 0? Uh, I could combine these things if I wanted to. Um, I guess it's e to the 2 minus 3t. Let's just leave it at the moment because we're about to put in t equals 0. Uh, e to the 0 is 1. So this is e squared 
plus 0 minus 1, which comes out to be e squared minus 1. Uh, and that is something that I can put into my calculator, I hope. Um, we've got an e to the x button, so that's e squared minus 1 is 6.389. I'll call that 6.39 approximately. Um, those last two parts that I've done about specific solutions given certain boundary conditions, in a way, um, although they're important and you end up doing these kinds of things when you solve engineering problems, the really important thing is the first part of the question and making sure you're totally clear on what the complementary function is, what the particular integral is, and how those two things go together um, to uh, solve differential equations. I'm just going to go back to the start uh, and also find our general solution. Um, so that's these two things. This is the uh, equation we were working with and this is the general solution to it. And um, you should make sure, sorry, that's the general solution, but I wanted uh, this version of the general solution. That one I was showing you there is for a specific boundary condition. This is our general solution. It still just has uh, an unknown in it, A. Um, and what you want to be able to do uh, in with first order differential equations is go through the set of steps to find the complementary function, steps to find the particular integral, and be able to get from an equation like this uh, to a general solution of it. And I think that's the really important part of these kinds of questions. And just to finish off, the this was a first order differential equation. That means it had a, a term with a first order derivative, so dx by dt. We'll also work on problems with second order differential equations, so they'll have d2x by dt squared plus dx by dt plus some amount of x. Uh, problems like that are second order differential equations. Um, the nice thing about using this technique for working through the complementary function particular integral is um, we do exactly the same things for first order and second order. So once you've learned one, you've learned both. So that is how to solve some first order differential equations um, and uh, some other time we'll look at second order differential equations. Good luck with it all.